On today's video, guys, something a little special for you. We're gonna be taking apart this old tankless water heater. I'm really curious to see what's inside. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know I've made a bunch of videos over the years on tankless water heaters and how to maintain them. And I found this one actually at the boneyard of the place where I buy my water heaters and thought, this thing doesn't look that old, maybe 10, 12 years old. Hopefully we'll find a manufacturing date on it when we pull it apart. But I'm curious whether this one got replaced because the boiler maybe had scale on the inside and it wasn't maintained properly. Because I've always thought that these would maintain them. If they were maintained, they would last for maybe 20 years. So I got a couple tools today. We're gonna use impact driver. Uh, and then when we get to the boiler itself, either we're gonna use the angle grinder got a nice cordless one from Milwaukee, or the bandsaw. Now this has a copper boiler on the inside. It's about a 200,000 BTU input, so very high heat. And if you've got city water, you really need to flush them pretty regularly because the mineral deposits inside that hard water are gonna scale up. They're gonna form inside that copper boiler. So hopefully we're gonna find something interesting in here. Let's get going. All right, let's see what's inside. Nice. Interestingly enough, no manufacturing data. I could not find any dates on this thing. Uh, this was an inside mount unit. It's looking a little weathered because it was probably sitting out uh, in the boneyard for a couple months. But the inside pff, looks beautiful. There's no, there's no uh, bugs in here. There's no spider webs. The copper area here looks good where the copper boiler was. I'm assuming this was maybe some heat tape or something. Not exactly sure, just to, that's gotta be what this is. No, no, I don't, there's no metal in there. I'm not sure what that was doing. But here's the copper right here. Let's see if I can take the case apart a little bit further and we can see, no manufacturing date, but interestingly enough, uh, made in Japan. My understanding is that there's several brands that are made in the same area of Japan, even though there's different manufacturers. It's kind of the tankless water heater capital of the world over there. So let me keep going. Let's see what else we can get to here. Oh, there we go. What does this do? I don't think it's heat related. I wonder if this is overheat related. I bet that's what it is. So look here, we've got two wires coming to this. Very thin looking uh, black in a loop. And this was in a circle around the boiler itself. I bet this is a shutoff mechanism for safety. So if it senses a break in the continuity here, meaning it melted, this copper boiler overheated and melted, I bet it shuts off the ignition. Remember, no standing pilot on a unit like this. Although you probably, if you look through this window, could see it fire. Man, look at all the electronics here too. Everything looks like it's in perfect condition though. Wow. Nice control unit. Everything's all clipped together too. Golly, as I mentioned, good condition too, impressive. I don't think I'm gonna be able to undo everything without clipping some wires, which it's trash anyways. Maybe I should just get, get to the cut and... Doo -doo -doo -doo. My head is actually the size of a 10 year old's, which is kind of ridiculous. That's just the pipe leading to it. So that would have probably had hot water exhaust going to it. Look, I only brought my Leatherman. Okay, so that looks good on the inside. No scale there, but that's not actually where the heavy lifting's going. Let's switch to the angle grinder and let's go straight down the side and see what we can find here. Okay. Oh, all right. Now we got in some boiler here. Let's see if we can actually pry any of this up. It's copper, so it's soft, pretty malleable. Oh, we got fins. This is good. No, I don't. I can't tell if that's actually where water is going through there or not. I think I actually need to cut this way and then back and then over again, and what's what's exposed a little more. All right. Oh yes, we're in. How about that? Oh man, look how malleable that copper is. I bet this has some pretty good salvage value. There's as much copper as in that boiler there. Oh 
Wow, what is all that? Is that where the, this must be where the boiler is, or where the burners are right here. And that flame is coming up. The water's coming in here. It's going through this series of fins. The flame is actually touching the bottom here. So all this part of the copper was doing was maintaining a sealed combustion burner and withstanding the heat coming out of these flames that were coming out of this right here. And if you looked in here, which is a window into that while it was running, you'd be able to see that those flames coming up and touching these fins where the water was coming through. So I haven't actually gotten, I don't believe, to where the water is actually coming through that boiler system yet. So I'm gonna have to cut a little bit more. I'll be right back, I need a tool. I think we might need a little bit of persuasion here. Oh yeah, here we go. I feel like we're in a Gallagher scene here. This is good. Okay, so these are the pipes right here that are actually heating the water. The fins are directing the heat to it. Can you see that on that, on that scene? As you can see my hand back, can you see my hand back through there? So, so it's actually these pipes that I wanna to get to right there. So I think if I cut this thing this way, which I might be able to get the bandsaw in there and get a slice out of that, I can look into those tubes and have a look. All right, bandsaw. Oh my gosh, look at that. It looks really clear. Look at that, guys. Can you see in there in that, in that pipe? Here's another one back here. You can see in this one right there. It looks totally clear. I don't see any scale in there whatsoever. Shocking. It, I mean, it literally looks like brand new copper tubing. I don't see anything in there. Let's, let's see if I can beat it out just a little bit more. In fact, let's put it on the ground. Okay, now we can see what we're looking to see. <laughs> it's like a big dead carcass. There we go. Now we can really see in there. Look at that. So what we're looking at in there use my screwdriver as a pointer, is those pipes really look good for a 12-year-old unit. I thought we were going to see a bunch of scale build up in here. Very interesting. So I would say this unit must have gotten replaced for other reasons, not because of failure, unless it was, uh, you know, maybe some other part, the igniter, something that went bad for 12 years. I don't think it was a scale issue. Very impressive. You know, they say these units will last 20, 25 years or they're well maintained. And as old as this boiler is, I mean, it looks really good. I would have thought if you just handed me this wreckage right here and said, hey, we pulled this out of a unit that's a year old, I'd say, yeah, looks like about a year's worth of uh, use on there. What's the moral of the story? Have soft water or maintain your unit. And I believe that they will last a very long time. I think this one is an anomaly that it was in the trash heap. And it is interesting that in that trash heap, we had, I don't know, probably a hundred tanks and only one tankless unit. So I don't know if that tells you anything, if that's a, an indication of popularity of tankless versus tank or in the replacement market that tanks rule. But I'll tell you, this unit did really well. You know, another fun video would be to go back there and take a different kind of saw and actually cut one of those tanks in half. Maybe we'll do that next time. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter. See you soon, guys.